Good morning and welcome to the service of morning prayer here at Trinity for Wednesday, May the 10th. It is good to be with you this morning. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 72. Rather apt considering the uh, consecration of our King. Give the King your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the King's Son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon, throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound, until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and the Isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, all nations give him service. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the life of the needy. From oppression and violence he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold of Sheba be given to him, may prayer be made for him continually, and blessings invoked for him all day long. May there be abundance of grain in the land, may it wave on the tops of the mountains, may its fruits be like Lebanon, and may people blossom in the cities like the grass of the fields. May his name endure forever, his fame continue as long as the sun. May all nations be blessed in him. May they pronounce him happy. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May his glory fill the whole earth. Amen and amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Romans chapter 13, reading from verse 1 to 14. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those authorities that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority resists what is God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, good conduct but bad. Do you wish to have no fear of the authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive its approval, for it's God's agent for your good. But if you do what is wrong, you should be afraid, for the authority does not bear the sword in vain. It is the agent of God to execute wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore one must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also because of conscience. For the same reason you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's agents, busy with this very thing. Pay to all what is due them, taxes to whom taxes are due, revenue to whom revenue is due, respect to whom respect is due, honor to whom honor is due. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandment, you shall commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does, does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is already the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when, it beca when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk decently as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in illicit sex and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flat flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for this morning is taken from Luke chapter 8, 
verse 16 to 25. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. No one, after lighting a lamp, hides it under a jar or puts it under a bed. Rather, one puts it on a lampstand, so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be disclosed, nor is anything secret that we would not be known, and come to light. So pay attention to how you listen, for to those who have, more will be given, and from those who do not have, even what they have, seem to have, will be taken away. Then his mothers and brothers came to him, but they could not reach him because of the crowd. And he was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside, waiting to see you. But he said to them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. One day he got into a boat with his disciples and said to them, Let us go across the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A windstorm swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, saying, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And waking up, he rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was a calm. Then he said to them, Where is your faith? They were terrified and amazed and said to one another, Who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water to obey him? The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This passage from Romans 13 was used extensively in South Africa during apartheid to justify the government's rebuke to Christians who were part of the anti-apartheid movement. It assumed an absolute submission to the state as the organization that was there as God's agent for the good. And like so many governments that legitimate their position through the abuse of religious texts, it was aimed at people like myself who refused to serve in the military as an instrument of oppression. The problem, I think, is when we read the text out of its context. Here is Paul writing to the church in Rome who was finding itself increasingly on the edge of opposition and persecution. This was a church that would constantly be object of demonization by those in power in Rome. This was a church that needed to demonstrate itself capable of being composed of good and law-abiding citizens. It is in that sense that Paul wants them to clearly lie as those who are on the side of the law and that gave those in power no reason to accuse them of doing wrong. This stance ties in well with Jesus' teaching on paying taxes and giving to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. But a more careful reading of that passage would tell us that there's something subversive going on in Jesus' response. In indication, indicating that the coin had Caesar's image on it, Jesus is picking up on that principle from Genesis that God's image is imprinted upon us. As those imprinted with the image of God, including the Caesars of our world, we owe a primary allegiance and responsibility to God. It's for that reason that Paul picks up on the idea, which is the summation of the Hebrew law. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. It is that principle that overrides all other expectations and obligations we might have, including to the state. So where the state might require me to dehumanize another and act in a way that is not loving, then I'm not compelled to obey the state. But in contrast, I'm called to act contrary to that instruction or requirement. In this sense, good neighborliness is defined by love, because love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So what does that mean in our daily lives? As Christians, we're called to be model law-abiding citizens who never give those in authority and power an opportunity to question our motive or to accuse us of wrongdoing or being motivated by self-interest. But there may come a point where that level of submission is no longer possible or acceptable. For me, growing up in South Africa in the midst of apartheid, that meant not participating in those institutions that dehumanized others and treated them as objects for control. In essence, the law required that I not love my neighbor as myself and therefore to disobey God. As a follower of Jesus, my first and primary allegiance is always to God and the rest is meant to follow. 
As a Christian in a democratic country like Canada, which places a great value on human dignity and worth, and where my own personal freedom to worship is respected and balanced by the rights of others in the law, they might not be seem much to get overly politi politically involved in. In fact, I would suggest the opposite is true. Christians should be at the forefront of issues around alleviating poverty, fighting for basic human rights, and involvement in creation care. Creation are my neighbours as well, and part of my duty of care as a human being created in the image of God. These are items where I might easily find myself in opposition to those in power or authority. In addition, in a culture where corporate corporations hold such significant power over the lives of others, I can exercise my power as a consumer to exercise my calling to love my neighbour as myself. That requires that I'm attentive and informed about the world around me and that I do exercise my duty of care, even if it is odds with those with whom the mantle of political power and authority has come to rest. Amen. We say, Hear, O Israel, together. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. This morning we're using Litany 15 for Easter. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. And that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. And this morning we pray particularly for parts of our communion that are in opposition to the state. We think particularly of the Diocese of Jerusalem and churches in the Middle East. We pray for our own diocese and the many different organizations that represent our sense of social responsibility for those in need. We pray for our bishops as they engage with the broader world and speak out. Grant them courage in their faith. We pray that God may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray that God may faithfully use us to meet the needs of others. We pray that by God's power, wars and famines may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. This morning we pray for those suffering due to the ongoing conflict in the Sudan. We pray for the hundreds and thousands of new refugees now fleeing. We pray that God may reveal the light of God's presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. This morning we pray for those on our parish prayer list and those who have requested prayers of us. We pray that God may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon God's people, that we may be a faithful witness to Christ's resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray for our collect for the weak. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another and walk in the way of his commandments. Who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray for our collect for uh, King Charles. Lord God, in your power you provide for your people and rule over them in love. Grant to your servant Charles, our King, the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and government, that being devoted to you with his whole heart, he most so wisely govern that during his reign your church may be protected and Christian devotion may continue in peace, that so persevering in good works to the end, he may, by your grace, enter your everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a reminder that we are on the, in the process of doing a course on Fridays at 11 o'clock till 12.30 called Living the Questions. It's a video series with a conversation and you're more than welcome to join us for those each Friday. And also a reminder that this coming s Sunday, May the 14th, we have our outdoor service at 11.30 for those folk who may be immune compromised and have some difficulty um, being around folk um, due to COVID. This coming Saturday, um, May the 13th, is our next messy church um, and uh, will take place on Saturday the 13th between 4 and 6 p.m. at St. Margaret's. And it's a great opportunity for families with small children um, to come together for worship, and for a lesson and a meal together. And the reminder that we have our women's breakfast coming up this coming Wednesday, May the 17th at 8.30, and uh, it will be at Stack, which is on the corner of, uh, of Cummer and, and St. Vincent um, in, in, the, in the stripping mall there, in the strip mall there. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.